Hello, welcome back to History of Wine and the Vine. I'm Emily Kate. So today we're going to be discussing um, drinking and drunkenness as it pertains to kind of different social classes. So as you can imagine, um, there was very different standards for people of different social classes back in antiquity. Um, and these different standards definitely had to do with drinking and what was acceptable. Um, so even though kind of the Romans had this idea of decorum, um, which was supposed to be control over your behaviors, um, many of the upper class um, Romans definitely participated in a bit too much drinking, um, but they were almost always excused from it in some manner. There was a lot of caveats that allowed for them to kind of, um, allowed for these elites to definitely escape the shame that came along with certain um, drinking bouts. Um, there were a lot of ways that things were kind of legitimized in um, the elite world for drinking, like there were the drinking games that were played only by kind of the higher classes. Um, these games had elaborate rules and kind of different, you, so for some of them you needed a whole special room in your house. Um, you could win prizes, there was always a winner, um, it was very competitive. So there were all kinds of different ways to legitimize. Then they also had um, uh, kind of speeches and debates over drinks, um, and there were also all different kinds of toasts, and a very popular um, kind of reasoning given for getting drunk, getting ridiculously drunk, um, that was given to excuse elites was that it was done to please a friend. Um, that wouldn't it be rude? Kind of like if, if somebody gives you a meal you don't like at their house and you still kind of have to eat it. It's kind of like they were kind of saying that it was that kind of thing. That if you go to someone's house for a symposium or if you go to somebody's house for a convivium or a commissatio, how dare you not get raging drunk. So to please a friend was generally the, um, the go-to excuse for a lot of people. Um, so we have a lot of different um, instances of these very, very kind of important and respected men um, of ancient society being drunks and being people who really couldn't control themselves, including the younger Kato. Now the younger Kato um, apparently had these infamous drinking bouts and would stagger home stumbling down the street early hours of the morning. Um, and it was actually Plutarch who said that he he was still such an awe-inspiring man that it was actually the people who were watching him come home um, who were blushing. Um, so clearly there's no blame on him, there's no shame on him at all, it's darn you people watching him apparently that were um, kind of to blame in the situation. Um, so there were a lot of different um, kind of people that um, Pliny and Seneca kind of excused in their own ways. Um, and I have some uh, names of them. So we have, and sorry if I butcher these, Novellius Toquatus, um, who could empty three congee at a single time. We have El Piso, who participated in the longest Roman drinking bout on record. That's something. Um, and then he routinely slept off his hangovers in the mornings. Okay. Um, and then we have members of Senate, um, including one named Cossus, who had to be physically removed from the Senate um, because he had fallen asleep um, in a drunken stupor right in the middle of the Senate. Um, but the important thing to remember is these were still respected men of society. They were being written about as respected men of society despite all of this drinking. So clearly there's kind of a lot of... Um, double standards happening here because if you look kind of on the other side and you look at the lower classes, um, there's a lot of um, kind of criminal offenses lodged against um, drunkenness and there's a lot of just complaints and legal problems that come from the lower classes being drunk. Um, there are fines for different disturbances and we actually have under the reign of Nero, um, there's actually an instance where there were people at a kind of lower income housing property um, who were disturbing the um, upper class clientele and it was said in kind of the report that they must have been slaves, runaway slaves, drunkards or both. So clearly it was not too much fun to be a um, 
lower class drunkard, but uh, tons of it to be a an elite one. So um, some things don't change, and I hope that you enjoyed this kind of look at the different social classes. Um, and I will see you next week. Cheers! <laughs>